Thanks for joining us on Key Factors, presented by theraceguide.com.au. Stu Rich and Mike Wood here to take you through the big program at Royal Randwick this weekend. It's not the group ones like the last few weeks. That's all down in Melbourne, but we've still got plenty to get through. We'll be having a look at the quaddy legs, doing all the best bets for you. A lot of value in there as well. And, of course, the $100 hot seat later in the show. Welcoming in our chief analyst, Mike Wood. Mate, got to say, down in Melbourne, it's absolutely Winx fever. The murals are being painted in the streets. The beer cans are being branded as Winx. <laughs> She is just marvellous, mate. I'm going to be down there to see it. She's the best in the world, and if they want to get her, mate, come out here and do it. I'm very jealous you'll be down there on Saturday. Good to be with you on a Thursday <laughs> night, mate, but I won't be with you on Saturday. You're going down. I'm staying in Sydney. Yep. There will be scenes at Mooney Valley this weekend. You've got to be positive about her, don't you? <laughs> but not everyone's been positive about her. Matt Chapman, the, the pommy pundit, oh, yes. he had a crack at her during the week and said a few negative things, and maybe he's got some points. Yep. Ben Battle did get flogged by a neighbour in the UK. So Winx will have to do the same thing on Saturday to prove how good she is. She's going to prove how good she is, Mike. We're all going to be there to cheer her on. Look, it's not just about the, that card either. I mean, four Group 2s on the card. And, of course, the night before, the Manicado, the punters are going to love it this weekend. Yeah, it's a cracking punting card. Friday night, Saturday. I've got no idea what's going to win the tight-turning track. You want to see the bias? Yeah. I bet you Damien Lane won't do what uh, Blake Shin did last year on True. Humidor, though. That was a fantastic ride. ride. He might be a lay for me. Maybe five bucks on who shot the bum. That's a good bet of tw over 2,500 metres. All right. Well, there's going to be a bit of sentimental money on there, no doubt, Mike. But we've got to turn our attention back to Ramwick. The skies have cleared up. That's what we do know. And I'll tell you what, looking at it on Wednesday night, you know the carnival's over. I saw Benchmark 78, Benchmark 78, <laughs> Benchmark 78, and another one to finish off. What is doing? <laughs> Wednesday racing, Sunday racing. This is not Saturday racing, is it? Such lower grade, but they all pay the same, don't Very they? Very true. These horses would get beaten 40 to 50 lengths by Winks. They wouldn't make the field, would they? Because the committee wouldn't let them yeah, into contemplate sure. to begin with. Let's have a look at the way the, all the four key factors and see which key factors we look at in this, in this race. Progression, has your horse improved on Saturday? Distance is stage of preparation. Not just the distance, but is your horse fit enough, including the 2,000 metres? <coughs> Track conditions are good to soft round week. There's a bit of sun around. And position and run, the speed map is key factor, so important on Saturday. Well, we might have to get to that track conditions, Mike, because the Shandon Sprint's the one that kicks us off over 1,000 metres. And we knew, saw by the end of the day last time where Revenir ended up was right near the outside fence. A few of those backing up from that same race. We've got Leo going, Beacon, Royal Hoot and Annie as well. So, yeah, like you said, it's just going to be a matter of where they're going to be finishing come uh, this is only race six. Yeah, very different on Saturday. <laughs> it was so wet the end of the last card. 11-metre yeah, yeah. rail this time, not so much room to move. Will they all come to the outside rail after so much racing at Royal Ramwick? We'll see on Saturday. Let's have a look at the first leg of the quad and see what we think of these conditions. Benchmark 78. You can copy and paste that through all four legs, 1,000 metres. A bit of variance in the tempo, which is good to see. The first leg, a strong tempo, a couple going forward, a couple of real speedsters in this race. The sun's out, it's drying. It's just yeah, going to be the God. edge off on Saturday. Fair bias, we think. When the rail's out, it can be quite fair but they might be coming down the outside rail, like we said, a bit chopped up near the inside. OK, we'll have a look for that. All importantly, let's get the quaddy kicked off and have a look at the first leg and the market to get things going. And that horse, Revenir, last start, a good run there. $3.50. Brook Magic first up. It has been scratched a couple of times, so $3.90 here. Beacon, a good run in that same race, $5. Sedition there, $7.50. $8 Goldfinch, single bullet. We know this horse loves to run a place. But Mike, Revenir, deserved favourite. Let's have a look at this replay because it did finish out wide. Yeah, big run, wasn't it? This is Everest day. This is the end of the day. The rain came down. It was sloppy. It was so wet. And Glenn Schofield came right to the outside rail and put a massive run in Revenir. Beacon, red cap, in the lead just now. But his last 200 metres wasn't quite as strong, Stu. Yeah, not quite up to the stable, mate, this day. And look, we're going to say it a few times, Mike. These conditions, obviously putrid this day, but they're going to be a lot drier on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, very different on Saturday. Both of these Godolphin horses should probably like it. Leo going on the inside, doing OK. Crossing the line with Beacon. The thing about Beacon and the red cap, he can take a big, big step forward second up. He can progress on Saturday for sure. OK, well, look, let's have a look at some more form here, Mike. We can try and line up the form again of Revenue. We're going back here to Kensington in the April, but this is where the horse was actually declared a non-runner. So that is him back there in the blue, but he didn't officially gain a start in the race. We've got Leo Gang and Sedition in the race as well. Yeah, funny one to line up, isn't it? Because in the form guide, there's, it says nothing. <laughs> but when you watch the replay, you see what happened. I think Revenue wasn't official, was it? But I think he missed the start by about seven lengths. Yep. He runs on pretty well out wide. The thing about Sedition on pace, though, he's really, really tough. He finds the line, and it was a strong tempo this day, so the run's better than it looked. Yeah, we love that here on Key Factors. And as you said, yeah, look, running on Revenir, did beat a few home there. So, look, 
Benny probably missing the, the start by seven lengths. Still doing pretty well at the end there. Yep. Let's have a look at all the form and the key factors now. The kick off the first leg of the quaddy. Let's look for the gold bars. Light them up, Mike. Yeah, Revenir, second to a good horse last start. Simply has the best form. Light him up. OK, so it's Revenir just on top as we hit the key factors. And the first one, as always, is progression. Yeah, we talked about Beacon can improve second up. Can have a big kicker. Revenir can definitely improve as well. Sedition first up. He's improving all the time, so he's got scope. That's why he's got a gold bar. OK, so it's Revenir out on, on, on in front from his stable, mate. What about distance of stage of prep? One of the horses we know and love on this show, Single Bullet. He hates finding the line over 1,200 metres. I don't know why we tipped him last start. <laughs> Back to 1,000 metres could be a genius move by the trainer. All right, it's a single bullet with a bit of gold, but Revenir is still on top. Track conditions back to the dry surface. You'd think there'd be some gold, but no. This, some of these horses will like a dry track. Brooke Magic might take a step back, but actually, no, she was on a dry track last start as well. She missed the wet tracks, even though she likes them. No big kickers here. OK, so still Revenir out in front. What about position and run? Who does this help? Yeah, there's a big, strong tempo in start on this race. Brooke Magic's got pressure on the outside. The horses that can just settle midfield and storm home. Revenir, Beacon and Sedition. All right, so looking at these, Mike, we've had a look at all these key factors. Time for a bet in this race. I mean, look, Revenir's been on top the whole way through, but it is one of the favourites. Book Magic, a little bit of support, love, a, a, bit of a, a little bit of support fresh I would have expected. But Single Bullet, you've mentioned this horse a few times. It is $11. You're not saying we're going back for a little place bet there, are you're we? Right. Yeah, maybe a place bet. You picked that too early, Stu, but definitely not a win bet. I want to see him cross the line first. He's pretty good in the ratings, though, isn't he? 11 bucks, <laughs> yeah. only a couple of lengths off. I think you've run a massive race on Saturday, but we're sticking with winners. We're sticking with progressive Godolphin types. The stable's flying. Revenir and Beacon, they're short in the market, but they have to run well on Saturday. OK, so it's Revenir for the boys in blue to kick things off in the quaddy here at Royal Randwick this weekend. Looking at the second leg now, it's the Heineken 3 handicap over the 1,400 metres. And, Mike, looking at the form, I'm struggling to line a lot of this up. We've had Man of Peace come from Wagga to win in town. Then we've got Careless Choice having its first run since the country championships back in April, I think it was. And then what do you do with Chasseur? Two <laughs> years off, but you've looked at the trials. Yeah, the trial's only fair. It's a waller <laughs> runner. I think it's gelded as well. Watch the market. I think yeah, she's I think the only so. you can do. Have a look at the mounting yard. The market's just drifting a tiny bit, I think, in early markets, which is not a good sign after such a long break. Yep. We'll see what happens in the 15 minutes before race, race time on Saturday. Let's have a look at the second leg of the quaddy and see how this 1,400-metre race lines up. Benchmark 78 again. A fair tempo this time. We've got some slower tempos later in the day. Edge off and definitely coming out wide late in the day, including race seven. All right, keep your eyes out for those conditions. Let's have a look at the market now for the second leg of the quaddy at Royal Ramwick. And that last start when a man of peace. $4 here, gets the run, scratch from the other race. Metamorphic, we'll have a look at this horse a little bit later, $4.40. Chapelco, really solid on pacer here, $6. Chasseur, there's that question mark, isn't it? $6 after two years. Pianissimo out to $9. Most exalted down from Queensland, $10. But a couple at the top of the market here, Mike, Man of Peace and Metamorphic. Yeah, really interesting race, really interesting market that could change a lot on Saturday based on our analysis, which you'll see soon. Let's have a look at one of those favourites last start, Chapelco, who two starts ago was so good with the bias against. He was stuck against the rail at Kensington and only just got beaten. This start, there wasn't any bias. He led and he was really, really strong, just kept, kept going. But the thing about this horse, if he was about 10 metres to his left right now on the main Royal Randwick track, he might have knocked up. His starts at Royal Randwick when it's not a very firm track are terrible. Fifth of five when $2.50 beaten 15 lengths. Next time, 11th of 11th beaten 31 lengths. The only decent Royal Randwick start was on a very, very firm track when he only came Fourth. You're telling us he's not a Ramwick horse, Mike? I'm telling you he's a big, strong type that might struggle up that rise. All right. right. Well, that <laughs> is key factors. We've got to have a look at all that. Let's have a look at the Queensland visitor now, most exalted. Now, this run, Mike, I didn't mind it. It was back on the inside, but I tell you what, it was on the heels here, and it's going well. Yeah, he's a Queens... Oh, he's coming down from Queensland, but he's a Mudgy horse, isn't he? He used to be one of the Sydney Sydney classy stables yep. had him, but then he went to Mudgy to go into the provincial championships, didn't quite make it. Up to Brisbane, racing first up. He was wide on the turn, finished off really well. Second up, held up, tightened, racing keenly mid-race and finished off really well, Stu. Yeah, love the last 50 metres here. More importantly, big gap back to third. That's a look at most exalted. We've had a look at a few of the runners there, Mike. Let's kick it off now. All the form and all the key factors for this second leg of the quaddy. Yeah, we talked about the market maybe being turned on its head. Looking across the page, Pianissimo gets the best form rating based on the weights. He's way down on the weights. All right, form for one of the ones that value Penisimo around that $9 mark. Let's see if he can hold that up into the key factors, progression. Interestingly, it's always gold pass for progression, <laughs> but not here. Keller's choice first up, we're not so sure. 
Most of them second, third, fourth up can hold their mark. Okay, what about some gold for distance? Yeah, up to 1,400 metres with a bit more tempo. Most exalted should really enjoy it. Okay, so there's most exalted levelling up with Pianissimo there. Track conditions, back to the dry surface for a few of these. Yeah, we're keeping with the singular gold bars. Gatan loves Royal Rami, but nothing else moving there. Okay, position in run, does this help us? Not much. Metamorphic <laughs> Another drawn, single goal. drawn nicely to settle midfield, <laughs> but most of these horses holding their mark from the form rating earlier. All right, I can ha tell from this, Mike, there's only been a couple of gold bars through there, and I'll tell you what, not many of them for the favourite. Let's have a look now at the ratings here, because I can smell a lot of value in this <laughs> race. Pianissimo has been in front from pretty much the word go, Mike. Most, most exalted right there as well. Both around that $9, $10 mark. That's clearly the way we're going to be playing here. But a little bit of a risk around a few of the favourites here. Yeah, big risk. Chapelco, we think he'll knock up. We think Metamorphic just wants a really, really dry track. And we think those top two don't always win, but they're great each way. Bets most exalted and Pianissimo, they can settle back in the pack. They can peel to the outside. They can both storm home. And Pianissimo's way, way down on 52. He's going to be so hard to beat. All right, so plenty of value there for the second leg of the quaddy, 9 and $10. Thank you very much. Stick around. We'll wrap up legs three and four after the break at Royal Ramwick. Welcome back to Key Factors, presented by the theraceguide.com.au. We're up to the third leg of the quaddy at Royal Randwick this weekend. It is the Celebrations Handicap over the 2,000 metres. And some sad news during the week with the passing of Dato Tan Chin Nam. Mike, you've only got to look at these colours and just think the white, the black, the yellow checks and just start thinking about horses like Catalan opening. You've got Saintly, So You Think, the list goes on. So many people have some of their favourite horses. And tomorrow being represented by Skyboy in this race, so good luck to Connections there. Yeah, he's a good horse, maybe not as good as some of those other horses you've <laughs> named. Fantastic horse, what a great man. He had such a love for horse racing. Sure did, yeah, put hopefully, so much into it. Yeah, hopefully we own a horse half as fast as those <laughs> horses. Shoot, that was some fantastic horses. Third leg of the coil, let's look at the way it sets up, 2,000 metres. A lot of his horses would love this distance, benchmark <laughs> yeah. 78. A steady tempo, like we said before, not too many going forward. It could be quite a tactical race with Skyboy going forward. Good four to soft five and they could be coming out wide in the staying race late in the day. All right, let's have a look at the market now. For race eight, it is the third leg of the quaddy at Royal Randwick this weekend, and the money has come for that horse we spoke about. Sky Boy, $4 into the $3.70. Mark II, an interesting horse, $4.40. Savakul, $4.60. Aqua Divina, fifth emergency, probably doesn't get the run, but being kept very safe in the markets here at $8. Solo mission there, Rakeek, very unlucky last couple of starts. But Sky Boy, Mike, the money has come for this horse. Yeah, that's a lot of money, isn't it? A great horse, great breeding, great trainer. We'll have a look in the second replay. Let's have a look at a Waller runner who are, they're so hard to beat over 2,000 metres, aren't they? And isn't this such a fantastic trainer? that he can keep his horses improving yep, so deep so into their preparation. This horse was flat for a couple of starts. It was over 2,400 metres. It was doing absolutely nothing. All of a sudden, over 2,000 <laughs> metres in a really high quality race. It runs so, so well. And how unlucky is this, Stu? I know. Look, this horse seems to be rejuvenated, Mike. I mean, it's on heels here. But yeah, you're right. Three starts ago, I wasn't touching this horse. Yeah, it was doing nothing. It was big odds <laughs> this day. The next start, it was way, way back off a slow tempo. Surged home and smashed the line for third. It basically should have won its last two starts. It's flying. <laughs> yeah, the good, good replay to look at there, Mike. Let's have a look at Skyboy now, because, look, it is heavily in the market, Mike, but we're going to show you this run, because importantly, this was an 1,800-metre run, the furthest this horse has gone. Big questions, though, out to 2,000 metres, but that's what you're going to explain. Yeah, that, that is the big question. One of the 1,550 metres, I think, at Canterbury before this start, it was in the market and it ran pretty well, obviously. It was just settled behind the pace, loomed up three wide. Looks like it's going to win. You just don't know this last 100 metres, don't you? It's sort of peaked yep. on its run and it evened out a bit. You can see it changing stride. It's had enough. What yeah, will it do absolutely. on Saturday at Ramwick over 2,000 metres? Does it have enough stamina is the question. It is the question, but you look at its last run at Canterbury, as you said, hit the line really well, 15.50. So look, they're the questions the punters have to answer. Good and question. at $3.70, they've got to take the odds. So let's have a look at all the form and the key factors now, Mike, to help us find a winner in this third leg of the quaddy. Yeah, despite the distance question, he wasn't favourite a few hours ago when we did this, wasn't he? <laughs> he was the third favourite. But his last start rating was so strong, he has to get a gold bar for form. And Rakik, like we said, should have won his last two starts. How can you not give him a gold bar for form? All right, so Skyboy and Rakik out in front here, Mike, as we hit the key factors and, as always, progression. Yeah, a lot of horses with progression. Mark II, the Kiwi star, can definitely improve after just winning a maiden first up. Savakul for Waller up to 2,000 metres can improve. Solo Mission second up. Offer freshen with a trial. 
did the same in the UK and won well. Wow, plenty of gold here, Mike. We've got three in the lead with Rakik and Skyboy and Savakul as well. What about distance to stage of prep? Yeah, lots of horses that like the distance too. Mark two were like 2,000 metres and further. Savakul's been absolutely savage in the line of this preparation. And Miss Shanty, she was good in the Queensland Oaks, wasn't she? She was. You've got plenty of information here for the viewers <laughs> here, Mike. Track conditions, I reckon you like this race. Yeah, track conditions. Maybe Rakik back to a dry track is a kicker for him. Lots of others are okay. Okay, so it's Rakik and Savakul on top here. Position in run, 2,000 metres. Well, this is the thing about this race. It could be a tactical affair. You want the right run, near the pace. Skyboy can go forward and give a big kick. Solo mission drawn well. And Smooth Whiskey, if he gets a run, he can roll forward for Waller as well. Well, you've had pretty much gold as it's been all across the page here, Mike. All the way through. Rakik's had some. Skyboy's had some. Savakul's had some. Time for a bet in the third leg of the quaddy. Let's have a look and bring up all these ratings now. And... Well, there they are, Mike. They are all right there. They've hit the line together. Six sixty, three seventy, ten dollars. I reckon I know which way we're going to go there. Ten dollars sounds pretty good. What about a couple of these in behind though? Mark two, interesting horse. Royal Stamp racing well. Yeah, I think Royal Stamp's covered. Mark two, absolutely terrified of her. The form riding first up just wasn't good enough, but she has got Oaks form from New Zealand and she can progress. Obviously, maybe the steady tempo, not ideal for her, and some really good four-year-olds with really good upside. But they're taking on a really good trainer, aren't they? Rakik <laughs> is flying. 2,000 metres is perfect. He's a great each way bet. He'll firm on Saturday. All right, so it's Rakik there. I like the little confidence there, Mike. You've had it, made some really good excuses for the last couple of runs. Rakik at really good each way. Odds there in the third leg of the quaddy. Let's wrap it up now. It's a spring racing handicap over the 1,200 metres to finish. And I'll tell you what, Mike, another benchmark 78. But Artie's dream winner. We backed this horse heavily last <laughs> start. We backed it right out the gate. It finished way down the gate. But I tell you what, right now, I didn't expect to be seeing it next start in the hands of the Hawks camp. That's pretty sneaky to me. What a sneaky runner yeah. it is, Chi. We're going to lose our money either way on Saturday. I can't line that horse up. It came last, last start. What a good stable they are. And they don't usually run their horses unless they're expected to run Very well. true. What to do with this horse, ex-Melbourne horse, on yep. Saturday. Let's have a look at the last leg of the quaddy. Another hard race, another benchmark 78 race, 1,200 metres. Steady tempo again, not too many going forward. Maybe it'll be dry by the end of the day. It could be a good four, could be a good three if the sun's out. And it could, well, it could be a good three out wide because the out wide ground hasn't been chopped up like the inside yeah, has. Right. OK, well, all eyes on there to the last. Let's have a look at the market now for the last leg of the quarter. It is the get out stakes at Royal Ramwick this weekend. And Coruscate, well, you wouldn't be surprised to see this horse figure right in the finish. $2.40, very well supported. Another one that's very well supported, Kawakini loves it. It's got the stats for fresh up, three from three, $10 into the $7.50. Artie's dream winner. There's that horse, Mike. First up for the Hawks camp, $8. Still being kept very safe here in the betting. And Generalissimo, $9.50, rounding out those under $10. But Coruscade's favourite for a reason, Mike. Yeah, very good run last start. Well, very wide last start yeah. after a very good win two starts ago. We're not going to look at him. He's obvious, there's obvious reasons why he's firm in the market. We'll have a look at a couple of roughies. Starting with one way down the page in the odds there, Star Reflection. She's a real Ramwick type, isn't it? This is the last time she was at Ramwick when the cut was just out, sort of soft five conditions. She was three wide, no cover the whole way. And boy, she ran well behind a very good horse, Jude. Yeah, that is Osborne Bulls just charging to the lead outside. <laughs> Went on to place in the Everest, as we know. But look, Star Reflection, Mike, six starts, I think, in the track, four places, is it? Yeah, four placings, but in better grade, most yep. of them. So she's so reliable, she's so good each way. Generalissimo on the inside of the yellow. He was pretty poor this day, but he does like to settle in the pack. And he was better two weeks before this. Well, look, you mentioned it. Was better two weeks before it. That could have been a bit of a forgive. So let's go back and have a look at Generalissimo. Got back this day, but look, love the way this horse finished off. Sort of weaved late, but very hard to catch. Very hard to catch. And don't, don't look at his stats, his fresh stats, too closely. Lies and damn statistics, they say. <laughs> and if you look at his first up stats, his three starts for absolutely nothing. But his first up runs are OK. This is his first up start. Last preparation, he's weaving through the pack, which he likes to do. He's got decent horses around him and he only just misses out Stu. yeah no it's a good finish here so look these stats mongers this weekend Mike they've got to have a look here because they've got Kawakani three from three fresh you've mentioned the stats on this horse aren't as good fresh but that's what we've got to weigh up that's all we're here for on key factors so now let's light up all the form and take us away with the key factors stats don't matter ratings do you can quote <laughs> me on that Coruscate Kawakini and Star Reflection all get the gold bar for form all right you're already getting quoted this is good let's get into the key factors to wrap things up progression I won't quote myself on social media yet. I definitely wouldn't do that Coruscate gold bar for progression. Artie's dream winner. Now with the Hawks, they could do anything. Generalissimo definitely got upside. Fresh, like we said. OK, so a bit of gold for all the favourites around here. Mike, distance is stage of prep. Yeah, edge off at Ramek. Uh, star reflection, not royal reflection. She'll absolutely love it. All right, so a bit of gold down the bottom. Star reflection levelling up there to Coruscate. What about the track conditions Saturday? Yeah, position in run. Coruscate just getting a nice run near the pace. Blue Tycoon could lead at a steady tempo. 
that's a good big plus for him. All right, look, so there's Coruscate at the top here, Mike. Blue Coat Tycoon right down the bottom. Star Reflection is levelling up there. We've had a look at all these key factors, Mike. It's time for a bet. Where are we going to play in the last? Because we've got Coruscate here, $2.40. The punters have really got to look at that. I mean, Star Reflection, you've made some really good cases there. Generalissimo, only a length in behind. So... How are we going to play this one? Yeah, it's a really tricky race, isn't it? And there's so many with good chances and you can't knock the favourite. But bringing up the overall ratings and bringing up the odds, we'll have a look and see which one we like. And we showed the replays and you sort of got a bit of a feeling for the way that we were going yeah. based on those replays. Chorus Gates right in this race, on pace, so hard to beat. But those two each way, there's so many each way plays on Saturday. Star Reflection and Generalissimo, they're the ones for us. Kawakini, her fresh runs have all been at Nowra. That's not good enough for us. <laughs> so Star Reflection, Generalissimo, each way, all day. They're both each way plays and both be hard to beat on Saturday. So $13 and $9.50 there to end off the day in the last league of the Quaddy. Well, they're going to be appearing in the Quaddy, Mike. So let's have a look at it now because we need to get one of these. It's been a bit of a run of outs with a little bit of unluckiness <laughs> in there as well. Let's have a look, though. We're starting off with four in the first and it seems about that way. Just a few in each race. Yeah, it's been months, I think, Stu, since we last got it. Revenue, single bullet, beacon and sedition to kick us off. Race seven is the tricky one. We're leaving out the favourite to putting in three $10 to $15 shots, which have all got country and provincial form. Race eight, going a bit wider. Rakik each way all day. I think there's four Waller runners, yep. plus the Cummings runner. And race nine, the favourite, plus those two each way specials for us. 100 bucks for 55.6%. Well, that's a pretty decent percentage there, Mike. Yep, let's ride this quaddy home. What about the $100 hot seat? This, on the other hand, is going quite well. Yeah, we talked about each way plays, and there they all are. The first race of the day, we, had, we got a Melbourne winner last week, yep. but I'm not sure about Mooney Valley. I'll stick to Sydney. Royal Celebration is such a strong horse. He'll be so hard to beat. I think the money will keep pouring in, and all those five each way bets, 10 bucks each way, 5 bucks each way, 20 bucks each way, whatever you like, and maybe a big place all up. I think we've already put on one on as well. OK, look, plenty of value there in the $100 hot seat. As always, that's what it's here for at the end of the show. Look, Mike, that's the Ramwick card, but it's all about Winx on Saturday down at Mooney Valley. I'm going to be there. Cheer the great mare home. She's going to be beamed all around the world. If you can't get to Ramwick, get to your TV screens and just enjoy the moment. That's all from us on Key Factors. We'll see you again next week. Enjoy the Cox Plate.